Hi, this is Frank with a Frank Opinion. Are you as enraged as I am with regard to the process involving the potential confirmation of Brett Kavanaugh to the Supreme Court? The Supreme Court, the third part of our tripartite governmental system, we know that we have the presidency uh, in a sham. We know that we have a broken Congress. And now we're going to accept the potential of having somebody on the Supreme Court that can make our third and extremely important part of our governmental system in a shambles as well. I've put down here very quickly the Federal Code of Conduct for Federal Judges. This is the U.S. Federal Code of Conduct for Federal Judges. Another criteria that I put on here, and you'll see why, is honesty, the third criminality. But let's just look at the first. Brett Kavanaugh's performance during the hearing, his so-called job interview, went against almost everything that I've read in the Code of Conduct for federal judges. So let me read to you. The Code of Conduct for United States judges includes the ethical canons that apply to federal judges and provides guidance on their performance of official duties and engagement in a variety of acti activities. Canon number one, a judge should uphold the integrity and independence of the judiciary. Underneath that, and there's quite a bit, but just a couple of lines, deference to the judgments and rulings of courts depends on public confidence in the integrity and independence of judges. I don't think that Brett Kavanaugh's ranting partisan rants against Democrats with conspiracy theories against Bill Clinton and, and the Democrats again and showing a warmness to the Republican side of the equation indicates anything but partisanship and anything but independence. Violation of this code diminishes public confidence in the judiciary and it injures our system of government under law. And we're always saying that we have a government of laws. Canon number two, a judge should avoid impropriety and the appearance of impropriety in all activities. Outside influence, a judge should not allow family, social, political, financial, or other relationships to influence judicial conduct or judgment. Again, the unabashed partisanship and background of Brett Kavanaugh disqualifies him automatically from that particular canon. Canon number three, a judge should perform the duties of the office fairly, impartially, and diligently. Number one, a judge should be faithful to and maintain professional competence in the law and should not be swayed by partisan interests, public clamor, or fear of criticism. Subsection 3 on that canon. A judge should be patient, dignified, respectful, and courteous to litigants, jurors, witnesses, lawyers, others with whom the judge deals in an official capacity. I don't think that Brett Kavanaugh's performance under the Federal Code of Conduct can get anything but an F. He failed. The second one, honesty. It was clear as day that Governor, that Brett Kavanaugh lied to the committee in terms of his habits with regard to drinking, in terms of his answering what about the definitions of certain things in his diary and other places, etc. He clearly was lying and dissembling throughout his uh, performance before the committee. Mind you, you know, I thought about this thing of not wanting a independent FBI investigation thorough to look at the potential criminality. My third uh, criteria here, if I'm innocent of a particular charge, I'd be looking as, as, as peaceful and as calm. Yes, by all means, bring it in. 
Bring it on. I want my good name that I have developed all these years to not have one, ice, one scintilla, one iota of doubt in the public's mind or eye with regard to my suitability for this highest court in our land. I would be as calm as day. I'd love it. Criminality, the third. Well, there's, there's a question mark there. But given his behavior here, and quite frankly here, I tend to believe Christine Blasey Ford. But let's say that this is a question mark. He obviously, in my mind, got an F on honesty. Code of conduct, absolute F. Honesty, if the FBI was allowed to conduct a thorough investigation and interview all the people that came forward. And, and you don't even need that. He was obviously lying. So he's dishonest. Criminality, yet to be completely determined. In terms of, once again, Jeff Flake, my goodness, uh, if, if our system of government to this state involved the Jeff Flakes of the world, I, I, gotta, I get a kick out of the irony of his last name. Uh, boy, we'd be in doo-doo. I mean, we may be in doo-doo. But then you have Chris Coons, his good friend, a Democrat. Immediately when Flake, Jeff Flake said to the committee, I cannot, I'll move this out of committee, but I won't move it to the floor. I won't be a yes vote unless we take a week to conduct an FBI investigation. It can be shorter, but a, a, a week. Now, in that, what amazed me, he's holding all the cards. I'm a poker player, by the way. I love poker. He's, he's holding all the cards. He also has the two other senators that are always mentioned as wavering and being on the fence with regard to votes. Murkowski and Collins. When he didn't set out the parameters, negotiate the parameters for his all-important vote, that told me a great deal about where this is heading. Coons, Chris Coons, his good friend, a Democrat, couldn't he have moved and worked with Jeff Flake over some uh, iced tea or coffee with a couple of biscuits on the side to work out the parameters what was going to be investigated along all these lines? How many witnesses would it be uh, old holes barred wherever, wherever the FBI can go without any restrictions within a week's time using all of their resources? No. The parameters were not set. So, of course, they are set by the White House and by Lindsey Graham and by Chuck Grassley. This was an extremely weak performance, again, by Jeff Flake. And I don't give too much credit to Chris Coons for not saying, and, and to his friend, set the parameters, because if you don't, they're going to be swept from under your feet. Suitability versus criminality. Here, the Republicans, aided and abetted by the media, forgot that this is a suitability. This is job interview. This is not a criminal case. We've already passed the statute of limitations on this. It's the code of conduct and honesty that could have been the deciding factors. And if they were, he would have gotten an F. And we wouldn't have him as a Supreme Court uh, nominee. Let me tell you what we've got here going on in the next 24 to 48 hours. John F. Kennedy wrote a book many years ago, it's somewhere in the den or in my bedroom, Profiles in Courage. Well, what we're going to have in the next 24 to 48 hours is once again, are we going to have Profiles in Courage, Jeff Flake, Murkowski, Susan Collins, others, Joe Manchin, Heidi Heitkamp, or are we going to have profiles in cowardice? Cowardice. I hope to God that we have in this 
Don't underestimate this particular decision. It is critical to every issue. Mine today is gun control. Every issue that you hold dear is subject to the confirmation of this individual or not. Am I somewhat uh, agitated about this? I certainly am. Since I can't, I'm so agitated I can't find the button to throw this off. But think about this in the next 24 to 48 hours. Thanks.